to sum it up in one word it is chaos <laughs> my husband is probably gonna watch this and be like oh heck no we're done <laughs> we'll see what he says <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin. I make motherhood, lifestyle, cleaning, cooking, and organizational type of videos on this channel. And in today's video, we're doing something just a little bit different. We are actually doing a Q&A so you guys can get to know me a little bit better. I said that once I hit 500 subscribers, then I would do a Q&A. So you guys have been asking me questions over on Instagram. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through those today so you guys can get to know me a little better but I don't wanna make this intro too long, so we're gonna get right into today's video. So the first question is, do you have any goals for 2020? So I'm not sure if this is in regards to like my YouTube channel or just like my general life, so I guess I'll do a little bit of both. For my YouTube channel, I would for sure like to get to 1,000 subscribers. Ideally, actually, like 2,000 would be a great goal for me. We'll see what happens in the new year. I'm super excited with where my channel is headed, and it has been so fun for me to get to know so many other mamas and just other women. So I'm really hoping things work out and that I'm able to get to that goal. And then as far as like my personal goals, of course, it's gonna be a weight loss goal because doesn't everyone say that? But anyway, I would like to lose the baby weight from my daughter. I had my kids really close together, so I never fully lost the baby weight from Easton's pregnancy, and then I had Brinley right away. So I'm probably about, probably like 12 pounds over my goal weight right now, which isn't a ton, but I would like to get back down to where I'm the most comfortable. And by no means am I overweight, I do know that, but I would like to get down to my goal weight. Another goal that my husband and I have is to build a garage this year. We live in a really old house. I don't know if you guys can tell, our house is over a hundred years old. It's an old farmhouse and we have remodeled pretty much everything, but we don't have a garage and it's so difficult with kids. I hate not having a garage, especially in this cold weather. So we're hoping to build a garage this spring and this summer. So fingers crossed that we can make that happen, but we will see how it goes. The next question is, might be a little personal, but do you guys ever struggle financially? So I understand why I was asked this question. I am a stay-at-home mom and we do live on one income, so it makes sense that finances could be tight. I'm not going to get into the details of our finances, obviously, but in general, I would say no, we don't really struggle. My husband is extremely frugal, so even if I were to like go a little crazy, he would totally rein me back in. So. I don't know, we've never really struggled with our finances even though we are on one income. But with that being said, we budget quite a bit and we're really frugal with our money. Like we don't blow money on things. We fix things up ourselves. Like we've redone our whole house ourselves. It's not like we're paying somebody to remodel our house. And we're just pretty budget friendly when it comes to pretty much everything. And we have a good tight control of our finances. And since I am a stay-at-home mom, obviously we really do have to watch our budget, so I make sure to really budget on groceries. I tr we try and not eat out hardly ever. We just cut corners and save money where we can, and it really does help a ton. So if you're a stay-at-home mom, you can definitely make it work on one income, but you do have to be more conscious of what you are spending your money on. The next question is, what are you going to do about the COPPA laws for your YouTube channel? The answer to this is I don't really know to be honest. I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens after the first of the year. For now you may have noticed that you have not seen my kids on my YouTube channel in a while and that has to do with COPPA. I just am kind of erring on the side of caution I guess. Obviously my videos are not intended for children. I feel like that's very obvious. It's for parents, it's for moms, it's for women. It is not for children. So in my eyes, my videos are clearly not meant for children, but I'm just kind of waiting to see what happens and what other YouTubers do as well. But in the meantime, I'm just keeping my kids off of my YouTube channel. The next one is how you felt when you realized you were pregnant. So I feel like I had very different reactions with both of my kids. So with my son Easton, um, we had been trying for three months to get pregnant with him and I was so excited, like over the moon excited. But I didn't believe it and then I was terrified, like absolutely terrified that I would have a miscarriage. I don't know why, I just tend to be a worrier but I was so scared. And I don't think we told anyone for, I think I told my sister a couple weeks after I found out and then I told the rest of my family a few weeks after that but I was just so excited and so shocked that it finally happened. 
It had only been three months since we had started trying, but it seriously felt like forever. So I was just so grateful that it happened. For those of you that might not know, my husband actually has Crohn's disease, which does not directly affect your fertility, but it can just affect your overall health in general. So I was always a little bit nervous about that it might be hard for us to have kids, but clearly that has not been an issue up to this point. So I'm really thankful for that. And when I found out I was pregnant with Brinley, I was only six months postpartum with Easton. I think most people assumed that it was an unplanned pregnancy. It definitely was not. We planned to have Brinley. We really wanted our kids close together. I feel like I was super excited for her pregnancy and for her birth, but I was really scared to have two kids that close together. And I was also scared to lose my milk supply because I was still breastfeeding my son. So when I first found out, I was like, a little bit scared just because of that. The next one is, how is life with two under two? To sum it up in one word, it is chaos. <laughs> like, I don't know. I always wanted our kids close together and so did my husband, but honestly, I don't think I anticipated how hard it would actually be because it's like having two babies. Neither of them are independent at all. They both need 100% care, but their needs are different. So it's just challenging. And Easton also does not do any independent play. So that has been its own challenge in itself. But overall, I definitely do not regret having them close in age. I can already see like how much they love each other. And I think they're gonna grow up to be the best of friends. So I'm really thankful that we did have two really close in age. And at this point, Brinley is almost six months old and I feel like I'm kind of coming out of the newborn fog. Things are finally starting to get a little bit easier. Not to say it's easy by any means, but we're getting there. The next one is how long did you breastfeed your first and are you planning to continue with the second? So like I mentioned before, I got pregnant at six months postpartum and I was still breastfeeding Easton at this time and my milk dried up like that. So I noticed a dip even before I got a positive pregnancy test. And then shortly after that, I had to start supplementing with milk from my freezer stash. Luckily, I had a huge freezer stash because I had way too much milk in the beginning. So I was able to supplement with that for a really long time. I think around eight or nine months is when we had to start introducing formula. So he ended up getting a mix of formula and breast milk from the freezer of between like nine to 12 months. So to sum all that up, he did end up getting breast milk up until a year, but he did have to be supplemented for a couple months at the end there because I didn't have enough stored in my freezer. The next one is if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? I don't even know. There's so many places I wanna go. I would love to go to Europe. I wanna to go to Hawaii. My husband wants to go to Alaska, so I know we're gonna to have to make it there. Um, there's so many places. I think my number one spot would just be Europe. Like taking a huge month long trip around Europe would be amazing. What is the hardest thing about being a vlogger? So I don't really vlog like my everyday life. So I feel like it's not hard in that sense, but sometimes it is hard to put things online and you know you might get judged for them, especially like the mommy content. People can be so judgmental of moms and moms can be so hard on each other. So I think that's probably the hardest part in the sense of like emotionally. And then the flip side of that is just YouTube is extremely time consuming. What you guys don't see is that I don't get a lot of sleep. I usually go to bed around midnight to one and then I'm still up with my daughter two times every single night. But after my kids go to bed, that is my only time to edit and I just make it happen for you guys. This next question I actually got a couple of times and it is, are we gonna be having any more kids? So the short answer is honestly, we don't know. Since we got married, we have always said we wanted between two and four kids and right now we're feeling pretty content with two, but that's not to say that things are going to change. I think the last two years have been really hard on me and my husband obviously too, but I went through two pregnancies back to back. One was a really traumatic birth and then trying to deal with two or two is very difficult, especially when you don't really have a lot of outside help. So for right now, I think we're content with two, but it definitely could change. I kind of don't see myself being done, but I definitely need a break. So if we do have more, it will be probably a couple of years. And I think I'd like to be out of this house for just kind of outgrowing it. 
It is a five bedroom house actually. We have four bedrooms upstairs and one downstairs. The downstairs one we turn into a playroom. And then the upstairs bedrooms are Easton's, mine and my husband's, and then Brindley is going to be getting a room, and then we have a storage room up there. So things are going to be a little tight if we have more kids in this house. So for right now, at this exact moment, we're done. But I have the feeling that we'll probably end up having two more later on. My husband is probably going to watch this and be like, oh heck no, we're done. <laughs> we'll see what he says. I'm gonna do these next questions just kind of rapid fire. They're all from the same person. So what is my favorite color? Um, purple, blue, mint green, I don't know. If we're talking colors to wear, gray, I don't know. I don't really have just like one specific favorite color. What are my favorite foods? My all time favorite food is probably spaghetti or pizza yum love me some good Italian food favorite Disney movie oh gosh what would be my favorite Disney movie I gotta think about this one I think Lion King is pretty cute but I don't know if I have like one specific favorite Disney movie I don't know I'm not really sure about that one the next one is what inspires you Honestly, my kids my husband I do the best that I can possibly do for them Nothing that I really do is for myself anymore, which kind of sounds bad, but honestly it's true. What I do, I do for my children and for my husband and to better our lives. Who are my favorite YouTubers to watch? My all-time favorite would probably be Ashley from Till Vacuum Just Part. I think she is so sweet. I love her videos. If you have not watched her channel before, go watch her. She is the sweetest. I love like Brianna Kay, Tiffany Beeston. I'm trying to think who else. Tara. Mallory Irvin is another one of my favorites. I'm trying to think who else I watch. Liza Adele. I watch so many YouTube mamas. A lot of times I like play it in the background while I'm playing with the kids just because it's so quiet if I don't have something going in the background and it's a way for me to like keep my sanity. <laughs> favorite books. Okay, honestly, I don't even have a favorite book. I went to nursing school. If you don't know, I'm actually a registered nurse, but I quit my job to stay home with my kiddos. After nursing school, I have hated reading. <laughs> like, just to be honest, I never read books. I really like the book that my friend got me, which I actually put in my recent favorites video, which is called The Simplified Life. That's probably my favorite book right now. Any of my kids' favorites. For Brindley, it's hands down the banana teaser. Let me go grab it. All right, this is Brindley's favorite thing ever. It's the banana tea there. I can actually link it. It's just from Amazon. I think it's like six bucks. Both of my kids have loved, loved this thing. And Easton actually still really likes it. It's just like super small. And it's actually a really cute tea there too. So that's Brindley's favorite. And then for Easton, oh man, he is super into puzzles right now. I'd probably say the Melissa and Doug puzzles are probably his favorite at the moment. The last one is any YouTube tips. So obviously I'm still a very new YouTuber. I have a very small channel, but I think my number one tip that I have found is to just be very consistent. And that is something that has been hard for me just with having kids, especially so close together. But I do notice when I am posting very regularly, like I have been in the last like four months, you will have a lot more traffic to your channel and you will gain a lot more subscribers quicker. Another thing that I would say is that what you put into your videos is what you're going to get out of it. So I actually spent a lot, a lot, a lot more time editing my videos now than I did at the beginning and it pays off. I get way more traffic to my videos that I spend more time on. So just keep that in mind that quality is almost better than quantity. And also just to be yourself, I think you have to go through like a period of trying to get comfortable on camera, but just in general, be yourself and people will like you. If you are pretending to be somebody that you're not, people are definitely going to see through that and they're not going to subscribe to your channel. So that is really all that I have for YouTube tips. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you got to know me a little bit better. If you have not subscribed yet, I would love to have you join my YouTube family. So hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.